these are incredibly bright people and, and you'd speak to them and you'd have a very nice superficial conversation. What have you done today? You know, what's, what's new on YouTube, whatever else. Uh, and then you'd ask, what do you want to do when you grow up? And they say, I mean, that's not up to me. Or, well, I used to want to do this, but that was before. Or the most heartbreaking thing, I think, is, well, I can't do anything because I'm never going to have a home again. Or that was, that was from before and, and now I don't have any options. What we would love to see is within Sheffield a specialist advocacy service for young people um, that have come and accompanied on their own to the city, where they could have a worker that was allocated to them, that could support them to explore the city, to help them to know what the difference between a social worker and a lawyer is, and to work out what an asylum process is. You know, because one of the major challenges faced by asylum seekers, you know, coming to the UK, and I went through this myself, is the issue of isolation. You come to this country, you literally know nobody, and you feel so isolated. So both your emotional needs and your social needs are a major problem. They didn't really take them seriously. They did a, they did a really hard job to try and get the policy makers to take them seriously because they were young people. As a result of our workshop, um, at least one of the major international child protection agencies agreed to approach its policy. We didn't have statistical support for the conclusions, but we had enough uh, descriptive data to make it clear that um, policies must be more holistic. Access to healthcare services as well becomes a bit of a challenge. It's almost as though the come into the country policies are getting better, but once you're there, it's like they just pretend that you're not there. You know, so how do you then live? And suddenly I thought, am I part of these um, very gendered processes? Um, am I going to buy into them by going, yes, I better get my hair and makeup done for the school prom, or um, should I just sort of be myself and, and collect the data that I want to do? So there were a lot of ongoing and unanticipated sort of ethical moments. For us to engage them hit to the core to make them a centre of research, we have to be very, very particular because they are mobile population. They are highly illiterate because they are not in school, especially the street and traffic children, they are not in school. There's a UN international agreement that everyone has the right to enjoy the highest attainable standard of physical and mental health. And that's also reflected in the charters of the EU and thinking about the ways that that's actually implemented and the challenges in being able to provide that and whether or not we go far enough to meet these international agreements is, I guess, up for debate.